The BCS gets underway in just under 72 hours with the Rose Bowl. So one last chance before the BCS starts to talk about some of the games. Hey, how are you folks? Jason Horowitz. Glad to be with you on the BCS Countdown Show presented by the all-new PSP 3000 system. And as we do every single week when talking about the BCS, we bring in Spencer Tillman to help me break it all down. Uh, Spence, uh, we'll get to the games that are coming up this week in just a sec, but I want to get to a game okay. That's a week from today. That's next Monday. That's the Tostitos Fiesta Bowl in Ohio State and Texas. The report out there that both Todd Beckman and Terrell Pryor are going to see snaps in this game. What are your thoughts about that when that hasn't been the case pretty much all season? Well, it is a little bit atypical from what uh, Jim Tressel has done in the past. And I think you go back to the move, first of all, to put the, the freshman in there to begin with and to sit his captain down, uh, Todd Beckman. And I thought that was pretty impressive and outside the box for a guy that's kind of conservative in his style as a defensive minded coach. I thought that was a heady move. And, and after all, the point of the whole deal is to get Texas thinking a little bit more about preparing for two quarterbacks. And isn't that the point of it all? Uh, try to stress Will Muschamp and uh, his preparation and all his brain trust to try to come up with a way to prepare for not just one, but two quarterbacks. And I think it's, if nothing else, it's a smart coaching move. Well, Spence, obviously Ohio State's trying to save face from the last two BCS national title games when uh, the Buckeyes got blown out uh, by Florida and then by LSU. Penn State also trying to help the Big Ten by beating USC. If one of those two teams win, either Penn State beating USC or Ohio State beating Texas, does that maybe start changing the thought about the Big Ten as being a weaker conference than it has been in the past? I that's a great question, great take, and I think it could, particularly if Penn State wins. If Penn State wins over this very, very difficult defense that USC is going to field, I think that's going to say a lot. It's going to speak volumes, number one, for the offense of that HD style that they run there uh, at College Station. That's going to be very, very huge. I think that win probably will be more impressive for the Big Ten than, uh, than the other way around, Ohio State being Texas. I think Texas, probably not its best team this year as far as talent is concerned, but certainly they're not lacking with respect to motivation, because if, again, and if they get a huge win and Oklahoma gets a modest victory over uh, Florida in the championship game, I think there's going to be a lot of noise, as we've discussed on this show before, about placing them, at least in the AP, as the split national champion. Spence, you, you talked about USC's defense and how big of a win that would be for Penn State. How do they score on USC's defense? <laughs> That's another great question. It's almost impossible. They lead, does USC, in every statistical category. This is the first time in, in the history of the NCAA that they've led in the top five major defensive categories. They're first in all the ones that really matter. And it's almost impossible to stop them because they cover extremely well. Again, you're dealing with the rarity in the Pac-10 and Pete Carroll, who is a defensive-oriented coach. Pretty much everybody in that league, in terms of head coaches are concerned, are offensive-oriented. So he's had a leg up on on everybody and that's extended outside the conference I think they've won 11 straight non-conference game have the men of Troy and they're going to try to extend that but it's not going to be easy because Penn State is on a 10 game run themselves and that's going to be a very entertaining affair when you look at it in the big picture uh, both these teams are just uh, eight times they've met in history four wins each so there's no undecided advantage for either one of them so it's going to be a very very good game we'll see how it plays out of course the Big Ten has struggled when going out to Pasadena in the Rose Bowl, especially against the Pac-10. They've lost the last four uh, Rose Bowls when meeting teams from yeah. the Pac-10. Uh, Spence, let's talk about the other two BCS games that happened this week. And again, we'll talk next Monday, finish up the BCS Countdown Show. But of course, mm -hmm. uh, the Orange Bowl also this week. What will be the key between Virginia Tech and Cincinnati? Well, Virginia Tech is going to be an interesting affair. They're going to play great, you know, football on the special teams. That's what Frank Beamer is known for. But I think it's going to be a special teams play that will decide it. Cincinnati with Marty Gilliard, I think, is one of the most profound and prolific style return men this game has had in the last 25 years of college football. And I say profound because of that great move when he goes into the end zone and hugs the little kid. To me, that was a great emotional moment for college football. They needed that moment. But he's bigger on the field as a return man. This guy is incredible. We watched him begin. Oklahoma early in the year. By the way, the only loss that Cincinnati has suffered so far this year, and of course they lost uh, one mid-game, I believe it to uh, UConn maybe. So they lost that game uh, to Connecticut and to Oklahoma. Outside of that, there's no blemish on their record. Brian Kelly is the Pied Piper, and he's really brought this ball club to a place they've never been before. We call him the Captain Kirk of college football. <laughs> he's gone where no man has ever taken this team before, that's for sure. So uh, he's got some special things going on for Cincinnati. Yeah, first New Year's Day bowl game in uh, more than five decades. The other part to this, Spence, one last game, of course, before uh, next week comes in, and that's the Sugar Bowl, Utah and Alabama, one of the more intriguing of the games in the BCS. Can Utah hang with the boys from the SEC? Will the key to this game be stopping the rushing attack of Coffee and Ingram? 
Yeah, from, from uh, Utah's standpoint, that's going to be the case. I'm really concerned about Utah because they play with speed on defense, and the best way to neutralize speed, Jason, you know, is to run right at it. And that massive offensive line, giving the ball to Ingram and Coffey is going to wear them down. Between those two, they average 157 yards per game. And I think as the game goes on, you're going to start to see this Utah, although fast and game, they'll be aggressive, but they'll start to wear down a little bit, and you'll see Alabama really take control. Whether or not they'll blow them out will be a different story. I think Utah has played a four games really close this year. They've had four that they've, just, they've won by three points or less, and that's been pretty entertaining too. So they'll be game, but they'll just wear down in the end. All right, Spencer Tillman, thank you very much, sir. We'll talk to you one last time before the BCS national title game. All right, Jason, we'll see you, buddy. All right, folks, and for more on all the BCS games or any of the bowls, there are previews here on CBSSports.com. Be sure to check all those out. That's it for the BCS Countdown Show, presented by the all-new PSP 3000 system. For Spencer Tillman, I'm Jason Horowitz. Take care, folks.